Yes, hello. Nice to see you. It's great to have you here. My name is Katrin. I'm from Wikimedia Germany. Um, working for um, Wikimedia since three years as the yeah, press secretary or spokesman, or however you call this. Um, I would like to present today the initiative of Wikipedia for World Heritage. Um, just a question before, is there anybody who didn't know about this uh, project? Keep the hand up, please. Okay. Did not. Did not. Okay, there are still a few. That's great to know. Um, yeah. Then I start. I think some people are still coming, but I will start right now so that we are not losing time. Um, I just want to give you a, a, a short overview on the idea, the background, the goals, and what we can do. And what's going on here after the, my short presentation, it's, uh, I invited some nice friends. Uh, they will come up on stage and uh, they have different opinions on this idea. So they will um, give you their statements and explain it to you. And then I would love to have an open discussion all together and change ideas, change opinions, and uh, see w how we go on with this initiative. Don't think that it's a German project, because it is not. Uh, when we uh, start thinking about what we can do in the, during the 10th anniversary of Wikipedia, we said, oh, it's a pity that uh, Jimmy founded Wikipedia in the beginning of the year, because then you have all the uh, media coverage and the parties and the rest of the year, there's nothing else. So we said, what else can we do? And not uh, even for, for media coverage, but to um, give uh, honor to, to our Wikipedians' work, to uh, an appreciation to them. And so we think about big things, really big things. And that way we come to the UNESCO World Heritage because it's mankind's most important cultural achievements have been included on this list. And they say it should have an universal value. Knowledge is an important good, if not the most important good. So, and Wikipedia is the most encompassing collection of human knowledge ever. We thought that's the way we want to go. We want to show the world that we are more than a website. Wikipedia is an international project and therefore to apply for UNESCO World Heritage seems appropriate. Um, just for the background, um, over 180 countries have signed the UNESCO agreement and keep in mind they did that 1972, so they never thought about digital sites. But Wikipedia meets many of the UNESCO criteria and I picked up only one and if you read this the site represents a masterpiece of human creative genius. What are you thinking? Who's that? <laughs> yeah, that was our uh, thinking as well. So our goals uh, are, as I mentioned already, appreciation of Wikipedians and their work. But we also want to increase awareness of free knowledge. And some people might say, oh yeah, this is just a PR gag. It's, it's, it is more, it is more. I mean, I'm a press woman, so I'm, I used to work since 20 years with media and um, public relations stuff. So it's easy to say, yeah, you're doing this for, for PR. But I think this is a wonderful PR instrument, and this is not a negative thing for us, to um, create the awareness, to increase the awareness of uh, free knowledge, to uh, use it as a tool for our main goals. We can talk about participation, we can talk about that we're based on donors, we can uh, talk about our ideas of free knowledge, we can talk about how what is Wikipedia and what we are now. And last but not least, it is also to protect free knowledge and access to it. Maybe it's not the main point for Germany, but I'm sure it's a real issue for other countries. So people 
were saying, hey, you, you're crazy. What a stupid idea, or that's, uh, that's really stupid and too big for you. But uh, we were thinking, what happened 10 years ago? What are they saying if we, uh, Jimmy starts with the idea of Wikipedia? I think it was almost the same. So you know where we are now, and you know we can reach everything if we try. In Germany, we started this idea, but what I want, for, uh, want to do now is to have a global initiative out of it, a global petition, because that's how we start. We uh, create a slogan and uh, um, this uh, logo, Wikipedia for World Heritage, and it's um, almost in, uh, more than 38 languages now. So uh, Wikipedia chap Wikipedians and the chapters already translated into more than 38 languages, and we started the petition. We um, create a website, it's uh, wikipedia.de, uh, but uh, it's translated in English as well. And uh, we uh, were lucky that we could get uh, Jimmy for one day in Berlin. So we produced very quickly a short video. I will show you after that. Um, this is, by the way, the starter page of, uh, Wikipedia, of the German Wikipedia. And here you see how we promote this on the starting page. And what you see, I don't know if you know this, it's our newspaper. We have a quarterly newspaper from Wikimedia Germany. Uh, we send it to donors, we send it to members, and uh, we describe the idea and we say what we want to do um, and that we need support. We had a panel in Berlin in uh, June and this was a panel with a journalist, a representative from the UNESCO, and Wikipedians to discuss the idea. And um, that was one of the main issues what we want. We want to create a controversial debate. So it's not that we say, everybody should say, yes, great, and now we're going on. No, we want the critics. We, we need the, um, the debate. To, go, to have it more lively. So that happened in Berlin once, and it was, uh, I think it was quite successful because we can learn from each other. And even the UNESCO representatives say, yeah, wow, <laughs> we never thought about this, but it might be possible. So, first good news. Um, we also have an, um, you remember the 10 Wikipedia org page for the anniversary and the parties all over the world. We took this to, um, for translation, for, we, we um, implement the FAQ, which is quite important, uh, FAQ also in English, and you're all invited to translate it in all other languages, of course. These are the activities I already mentioned, but um, there should be more activities uh, than discussion and panels. You can use it for, for events and promotion, but uh, what I would like to ask you, don't uh, understand it as a single project. Try to um, include it in your projects. By the way, uh, the school project. There is a school project in different countries. Why don't you wear t-shirts and in the end you say, hey, <laughs> Wikipedia for World Heritage. Or for Wikilove's monuments might be an interesting. Or another idea could be that we um, have added editing uh, contest, is that the right word, yeah, to, uh, about all articles about World Heritage, and I hope you have further more ideas. So today I would like to say just join us, give us more ideas, um, take this uh, initiative for your own country, and we, we are happy if we can give you all support you ever need. That means uh, in the beginning, we have the press release. Um, I send out press releases, which we can easily translate in other languages. We have T-shirts. 
somebody might have uh, fetched one. I only bring along 30 t-shirts, but we can have more in different languages. And uh, like the uh, 10 years anniversary, we can make a starter package. We can create ideas together and go on. The petition is running till January next year, so there's still a lot of time to use this idea for your own PR. And this is what happened so far. I mean, this is a map where you can see four, okay, Hong Kong. Is somebody from Hong Kong here? Oh, God. <laughs> There's a mistake in Hong Kong, so. But Hong Kong has a great, great <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> But I just want to say thank you to Hong Kong because they send me pictures and they are amazing. And they, I, I, I can't say when they when they send it to us, we were we were almost crying because they don't have that much money and they don't have employees. But what they did, they painting, they they have paintings, they made paintings like this, Wikipedia for World Heritage, and they went on the street, taking the paintings and making pictures from people, different people who signed the petition after that. So we have a great collection of pictures, and you know, pictures are emotional. Pictures gives the um, idea or a project uh, the real feeling and the real life. So this was one of the ideas. India is going to have some more activities. Uh, they just sent a picture where they had the first chapters meeting, I think, and they all wear the t-shirts, so it's quite nice. Is there somebody from Italy here? <laughs> India, I know. We talked already. Is there somebody from Italy here? No. Italy were the Italian were quite bold. I mean, be bold is, is the best to say. They put a side notice on the Italian Wikipedia, and then, and they didn't tell me. So in the beginning, we had a lot of uh, German signers. Since now, they are most of the signers are German, and from one hour to the next, we had hundreds of Italian people, and we said, "What the hell is going on there? Do we have some Italian uh, happenings in Berlin or in Germany?" No, it was because of the side notice. So you can um, support uh, this idea like this also. Up there is Germany. It's just a picture of the panel I mentioned, and um, the stars or something like stars. These are the um, countries where they um, translate the petition in their own language. I hope, I really hope when I stay here, I will stay here uh, or on another stage in January, this map will be full of pictures. And uh, you know, you can, you can help me. Um, for further information, we have the Wikipedia DE page, but we also have the 10 page we had, and this is quite important for you if you like to communicate, if you need more, uh, more support, or if you have questions or critics or ideas, whatever, we uh, um, communicate on the WikiX mailing list, so please join this list, and uh, we can go on with further talks then. So, and I would like to show the video quickly. Is there anybody who knows this already? Yeah, just a few. Okay, then I, that makes sense to show this. I think not even Jimmy knows it right now. <laughs> you haven't seen that. So I hope it's okay. It was a low budget and very quick one day production. Um, but for us it was perfect. It was great. Um, pardon? Say it again. <laughs> Need to find the right one. <laughs> It 
do we have sound? So, where's the sound? Was that the, is it not working? Can you, can you do that? Can you do that in the meantime and we go on? What do, what do I have to do? Yeah, more, more. I can't understand. Yes. Press the button. I would like to invite uh, my guests now to come up and to give the statements for you know, what they prepared. So it's uh, Pavel. Um, Pavel Richter is our executive director. Um, he's a first, and he will introduce the other guests and yeah, moder mod moderate a little bit at the talk. Well, thank you very much, Katrin, for, uh, for your introduction, and welcome everybody to Wikipedia for World Heritage. Um, I'm not doing this alone, of course, uh, as Katrin already mentioned, um, I, we invited a couple of people to help us along here, and uh, I would like to ask them to come uh, uh, on the stage and join me, because it gets lonely up here, so no, Liam, ready. Florence, Jimmy, and the three people I invited is Jimmy Wales. Um, do I need to introduce him? Uh, uh, he came up with an idea that is even more crazier than uh, Wikipedia for World Heritage. He came up with the idea of Wikipedia. Um, so Jimmy Wales, uh, thank you for joining us. Please have a seat. Um, oh, and always, always, always introduce the woman, uh, the lady first. So sorry about that, Florence. Uh, Florence Devois from Wikimedia France. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And Liam White, uh, from, uh, currently working as a fellow as a, at the Wikimedia Foundation and inventor of GLAM, uh, Gallery, Libraries, Archives and Museums. So thank you very much to join us here. What I, what I would like to do is, um, I'm not going to talk now for 20 minutes, uh, or we are not going to talk for 20 minutes. I would like to kick off with a couple of questions and get a couple of statements, but then um, I would like to, uh, to put, get you into the, the, this discussion, because as uh, Katrin already mentioned, this is about um, spreading the word and getting this initiative, uh, which we started a couple of months ago, um, get it rolling uh, outside of uh, Germany as well, and outside of Italy, I have to mention. Um, so, um, and I would like to discuss with you all um, ideas of what we can do. Maybe you already started something, you would like to share it, or you would, uh, uh, you come up with good, good ideas that we can uh, replicate in other cities. But be before we do that, um, Jimmy, we, you and I, we talked about uh, the Wikipedia for World Heritage uh, back in April, uh, um, um, I think. And um, what was your first reaction when, uh, when you heard about Wikipedia for World Heritage? Well, the, uh, Pavel had uh, asked to have a meeting with me in uh, London, and uh, he said, I'm going to be in London, can we have a meeting? And I said, oh, I know they're going to want to make me go to Berlin to do something. It's terrible. So I said, well, do we, can you just send me an email? He said, no, no, I, just, I really want to sit down with you and talk. And I love Berlin. I love Berlin. I just hate travel, surprisingly enough. Uh, so he came, you know, he was in, in London, and, and we sat down uh, for lunch. And uh, he started to explain the idea to me, and I immediately got very excited about it. I thought, wow, this is really cool. Um, and... Uh, for me, I think the, the, the biggest thing that really resonated for me is um, very often uh, Wikipedia uh, is uh, viewed in the press uh, as a technology or business phenomenon. Uh, when we are, are written about, we're often written about by uh, journalists who come from that field, like uh, Noam Cohen, who I see out in the audience. And we love Noam, and we love the coverage that we get. But what's interesting is if, if you know us and you know our community and you, you know what we think about what we're doing, uh, we're not really uh, so much of a technology story, uh, not anymore. Uh, there is, of course, technology underpinning, but it's sort of like, um, you know, imagining that a, a story about family vacations in the United States is a story about automotive technology. No, actually, we use the technology to do this thing in culture. And so, for me, I think it's interesting to, to think about Wikipedia in this light, to say, actually, what we're doing, we hope, is 
something valuable to the world, something uh, unique in the history of the world, it's something global, and it's something that will be remembered um, in a way in 500 or 1,000 years as something, you know, people will look back and say, wow, that was something they really accomplished in that era, the, the same era that they, you know, almost destroyed the planet and did a few other bad things. Uh, but they did a couple of good things, and one of them was write everything down that they knew, and they tried to do it neutrally, and they tried to be fair, um, and they did it for free, and they gave it to everyone. So for me, I think uh, it's a great recognition of, of Wikipedia as part of world heritage, and that's why I was really excited about the concept. Liam, um, being a glam ambassador and uh, traveling the world, uh, talking to people who are uh, actually working on uh, cultural heritage uh, and talking to people whose business it is and whose profession it is um, to be um, conserv uh, conserving uh, world heritage and, and uh, the uh, things um, people achieved. Um, did you get, and uh, I, re I remember we talked about the World Heritage Initiative uh, in a couple of months ago, and your, reaction, your first reaction was uh, very uh, uh, enthusiastic, uh, I might uh, say. Uh, those of you who have been in Berlin know what I mean. Um, and uh, the, the question is, um, I would like to ask you, uh, did you, uh, over the last couple of months, um, met people within uh, uh, cultural institutions, within in GLAMs, uh, GLAM institutions, uh, who actually knew about this, or who, did you use it in any way to discuss uh, the cultural value of, of Wikipedia? So did it, does it help you, or do you get any kind of reaction out of it? Um, so the, yeah, the real reason why I'm here is not because I'm involved in GLAM stuff, it's because I was so enthusiastic when I first heard about it. I yeah. believe the original quote was, that's a fucking good idea, and you can quote me on that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure about that. <laughs> um, no, 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 I'm sure about that. Uh, so I, yeah, I do refer to this, this project when I, I talk with, with GLAMs and go to meetups around the world and things. Uh, it's not the, the only cool thing about Wikipedia or a nice idea to galvanize some um, uh, interesting discussions. But why I particularly like this uh, is not because it's about getting on the list. Because getting on the list won't change what we do at all. It won't give us any more money. It, it's cool, but what this is about is, it's, it's a conversation. It's starting a debate in the broader society about what cultural heritage means in the 21st, in the digital, digital age. Uh, and if people start saying, okay, cultural heritage can also mean something that's digital, not just an old building that we have to preserve, that's cultural heritage, yes. But can we not have contemporary cultural heritage? Can we not have cultural heritage that is alive and changing? And then people say, but, but you have to, if, you have, if you're on the list of cultural heritage, then you have to lock it, you have to preserve it so that anyone can, it's stable. To which we say, that's their problem, not our problem. That we're not going to change Wikipedia policies and lock Wikipedia because it's now world cultural heritage. Next one is usually the question is, but you have to be a physical thing. Well, so says who? because the list was written, the, the rules were written before there were digital things. The final, the final one is, but you have to come from our country. And this is where a lot of the glams come in and they say, well, um, we're, we're the National Trust, for example, and we look after these uh, World Heritage National Parks or these World Heritage uh, collections of temples or whatever, and they belong to our country, our culture. And the way the list works is you have to be supported by the a minister of culture from your country uh, who takes it to UNESCO and, and that's a formal recognition on behalf of your country. What country do we represent? We don't. We represent the world the, and that's, that's even better than, than world you know, cultural heritage for our country. You know. ah. uh, <laughs> so if that means we can't get on the world cultural heritage list because we're not from a country, but we're from the world. That's their problem, not our problem. So it's not about getting on the list or getting off the list. It's about taking a discussion to the public about being engaged in living, breathing cultural heritage and having a personal stake in cultural heritage. So that's, that's what I like about it. 
Thank you. Uh, Florence, um, there are a couple of, uh, I don't know who knows about the classes of world heritage that is out there, or are out there. There are a couple of them. So it's not only one list, but a couple of lists. And I don't want to go into these details. Um, uh, I haven't heard anything about this before we started this initiative, I uh, must admit. But um, on one of these lists about uh, heritage, uh, uh, world heritage sites, uh, or not sites, but world heritage, is French cuisine. Um, and everybody who has eaten French uh, knows why it is rightly there, because it is actually a very, uh, uh, very good way of cooking meals. Um, and that is... <laughs> <laughs> and, that is my, and that is my introduction to, to Florence and uh, my question, because I know, and I, I, I did this uh, deliberately, uh, uh, not to make fun of the French, but because I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody understands it's not only buildings, but it is uh, culture, it is uh, ways of what people do, for example, like prepare food, or there are dances on these lists, so, uh, and I think they're rightly there, uh, and uh, this is an important part. But Florence, I wanted to ask you when you heard first of my, uh, of, of, uh, from me from, uh, about this idea in, back in Berlin, your first reaction was different from Liam's, I think huge perplexity but since you are asking about the food <laughs> maybe I will change my mind <laughs> <laughs> um, you know that I was a huge supporter of having recipes on Wikipedia so I kept these ones as much as I uh, the longest I could on the French Wikipedia but at some point some people still succeeded to remove most of them I was so disappointed so maybe keeping the recipe would have helped actually to get into the list <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> I have a new argument. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, was, I was suspicious. I thought, wow, that's a very, very weird idea. I must confess, yeah, that's a, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so since you were so supportive, I will be on the other side, right? Just for the sake. I will be in the opposition. Uh, so I was super suspicious and uh, I thought, so what? Uh, and it's a bit strange to say that because of course we know UNESCO is, is uh, much more in France than in Germany. So it's <laughs> I meet them from time to time and uh, why not? And there was so much a different world, it, it seemed very, very strange. So that was my first feeling. First, why not? Did you hire somebody to take care of this? I thought it was, wow. On the French side, we're still struggling to just do the basic, and these guys are hiring people to try to get the word heritage. Well, weird. The second thing, I thought, oh, I need to forward this idea to the French uh, list and to see which type of feedback do, you, do we get from this. And my first um, comment would be to say that I surprisingly, we got rather few reactions. There were some supportive reactions, some saying, uh, yeah, but just as you were, just thinking, yeah, that's a, there's something there. And there were others, pretty negative reaction, but overall there was no crisis. <laughs> Maybe not so, not so bad. And uh, who is the supporter? No one? Please, guys. Okay, who is in the opposition? Yeah, this is going that's to great. be great. Hi, Timo. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> So I need to defend only two people there. Okay, right. So a couple of reactions, quick ones. Um, somebody said, I haven't checked myself, that the city of Dresd was removed from the list because a bridge was built at some point and it removed somehow the beauty of the city. So it seems to be incompatible with the notion of Wikipedia, which is changing all the time. So how do we get on this? I mean, could Wikipedia could be defaced. Uh, could degrade in terms of quality, who knows? Maybe. So that might be one of the first arguments, which is really to say that it's not compatible. One the, the other reason um, they, they gave is that, uh, the, so aside from the project being very much alive, there was the question of, um, what do we do if it's on the list? I'm also asking the question, because it so happened I'm a member of the city council in my city, and we just decided to register the volcano of my place in the list and most of the people are voting against they still think the volcanoes are great but yeah private volcanoes no that not one just one volcan d'auvergne volvic do you know volvic the water no no one knows the water volvic okay it comes from there and the water coming from the volcanoes so there is a whole chain of volcanoes it's beautiful come there bring your money it's fine, perfect. 
I can give you some Wikimania 20 whatever. Uh, and but they say no, it's a bad idea because once it's on the list, we won't be able to you know change, build a bridge or whatever. So. Uh, what is that going to have some impact on Wikipedia afterwards if it's on the list? Are they going to cite some stuff or, or whatever? And um, there, uh, there were a couple of reactions I thought was, were funny as well. Why not recognize the Wikimedia Foundation rather? So that's the organization rather than uh, the project itself, okay? And other people say, one thing that would be wo more useful is to convince the UNESCO to actually collect uh, their journals and their articles and to put their articles under a free license so that everything could be on our project. That would be much more useful and much more interesting. You're working on that as well. So <laughs> what about all these things? So these were some of these reactions, but actually they were quite limited. So maybe we can ask the, uh, Timu, what do you think? Yeah, that's a great what, idea. Let's what's open what's it for the discussion. We can uh, use this mic as well. We can't. Yeah. Maybe this isn't long enough to attract it here. Yeah, I, I kind of think it's a good idea, and I like how, how you were explaining it, that, that the digital cultural heritage should be included in there. I agree with that. Uh, but I think there's a better candidate for that, and that's Internet Archives. Wikipedia is the second candidate, I would say, in the Internet universe. Well, that, that's very interesting. Uh, uh, that's an interesting argument. I haven't heard it before. Uh, and uh, the Internet Archive is most certainly uh, a great, uh, great thing. Uh, um, I would argue that Wikipedia is uh, what Wikipedia makes. Uh, well, why Wikipedia is actually so unique is uh, the community that builds it, uh, and that is different from the uh, from the Internet Archive, as I understand it, which is um, put together automatically. And this is put together by you all, and so it's a it is actually it's a product of human uh, genius. What it's uh, uh, and that is uh, one of the core definitions of, of World Heritage. Um, there's one aspect I would like to, to, to raise and uh, maybe raise with you and uh, with Jimmy and uh, with, the, with the panel here is one of the reasons why we do this is because we want to highlight that Wikipedia and free knowledge uh, has enemies. That uh, what we, are, we are all like, we, everybody loves Wikipedia. Nobody would tell you in your face Wikipedia uh, sucks or Wikipedia, not anymore. So making fun of Wikipedia is so 2007 I learned yesterday. Um, so. Um, so nobody's uh, talking about this anymore. Yet there are powerful interests who don't like what we do because we are creating a, a huge body of knowledge uh, and knowledge is power and so we are taking away power from people, um, from powerful people. Um, so what I would like to, to, and I would like to see, to get your input here is uh, uh, who are enemies of, of free knowledge? Uh, who's threatening uh, free knowledge um, in Western societies but especially uh, in developing uh, countries as well? Question. How would we be more protected if we are on this list? I do believe that for a country like China, Pakistan, or Iran, who re, uh, frequently block Wikipedia, uh, or part of Wikipedia, it makes a difference. If they block Facebook, they fa block um, a web page. If they block Wikipedia after it's on this list, they are messing up with a, a World Heritage site, and it makes a difference. Does it, uh, would it stop, would it stop China to do so? No, it wouldn't. Uh, these people wouldn't uh, stop uh, because of that. But it gets even worse for them if they do it. Uh, and that's, I think, a very good, uh, reason for that. I wanted to ask uh, two, two questions. First, uh, it's a great idea, it's a great vision, but uh, the two questions I have is, first, uh, Wikipedia is not the largest site, Facebook is bigger, it, the, influence, the influence of Facebook, for instance, is bigger on the world society. Uh, and the second thing is uh, the German, English, French, or oh, English, German, French Wikipedias are great. Uh, but, but we have uh, about 300 languages of Wikipedias. Uh, some of them have uh, hundreds or uh, hundreds of articles and uh, are very uh, poor uh, encyclopedias. 
So um, if we want it, if we, if we, if we claim it's a world heritage and it's not um, a world thing, but only in uh, the three important, of course, languages, how come can we claim it's a world uh, thing? Um, can I take that one? Um, for the first question first, yes, Facebook is bigger than us in terms of number of page views, number of users, amount of money. Uh, Google is bigger again. Uh, but you don't get buildings on the World Heritage List by just being big. Uh, there are bigger things on the World Heritage List that are not on the list. <laughs> the difference is, is, does it make a difference to world cultural heritage? Not just because it's important. And Facebook is important, but not in the way that we're talking about importance. So. The other thing is, uh, and relatedly, a lot of the things that are on the list, uh, both physical and intangible cultural heritage, which includes things like uh, flamenco dancing, uh, they are not required to be universal or uh, complete uh, as they were. The, a lot of the buildings on the World Cultural List are ruins. They are effectively the same idea as these small Wikipedias. They're, they're not pretty anymore. They were pretty, but they're, they're ruins now. And doesn't mean that they're not important or that they can't be world cultural heritage. As a collection, we're not talking about Wikipedia for world cultural heritage, English Wikipedia. What this really means, uh, although it's hard to sell to the media, is the Wikimedia movement and the stuff that we have created in Wikinews as well and Wikisource and, and all the rest of them. It's obviously convenient to say Wikipedia, but just because one part is big and one part is small is no reason why the idea can't be cult world cultural heritage and everyone feel like they have a sense of ownership by being a citizen of the world. It's part of your, your cultural heritage and a collective responsibility for me as a citizen of that world to look after my local as well as flamenco and, and things elsewhere. All right, so I have a question here for the panel, especially considering what I've been hearing about cultural heritage and the fact that in, at least in my country, a lot of our heritage sites are in danger of being delisted because we are not good at maintaining them. But that aside, I think it's important to note that for a lot of people, especially in developing countries, there are still a lot of misconceptions about a lot of the things in the World Heritage List. I don't think that, let's say, somebody from Africa would, give, would necessarily care about preserving flamenco dancing, as someone from South America would care about preserving the Banawe Rice Terraces in the Philippines. So, at least for me, it's kind of, a, it's kind of the question of traction. Is there really going to be enough traction simply because, let's say, Wikipedia, the concept, and the movement is declared to be World Heritage, and I just tweeted it earlier today. Um, will there be, is there necessarily going to be enough traction, let's say, for the movement to sustain itself once it gets onto the World Heritage list? So is there an assurance that we will not rest on our laurels once we get ourselves on such a prestigious list? Well, I mean, I think, you know, the goal uh, that we have is a free encyclopedia for every single person on the planet in their own language, and nothing will dissuade us from that, and uh, that's just what we do, whether we're on the list or off the list. So I don't think, I, I mean, I can't imagine, um, for me anyway, uh, you know, if uh, in two years' time after the bureaucratic processes turn and they say, yes, Wikipedia is on the list, that I'll say, okay, done. Uh, <laughs> I can watch TV now. Um, that, 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 that just uh, isn't it. Um, so I don't, I don't think that is likely to be uh, a, a problem. Instead, I think if it encourages people to think of Wikipedia in, an, in a new way, uh, all of our values about being global, uh, about being something for the world, uh, may actually uh, help us in various places around the world for people to really um, 
just one more piece of it. Obviously, we, we have this message all the time in many different ways. But one more piece of saying, this is for the world. This is for you. And if Wikipedia in your language isn't as big as it should be, as big as it could be, we would love your help. Uh, so I, I think it just is in tune with our message uh, in general in that way. I, just real quick, because I didn't get a chance earlier. Um, uh, one of the previous comments, it just triggered in my mind uh, a, a, a third candidate uh, would be Project Gutenberg, actually, as, uh, s yes, Project Gutenberg is great. Um, and, and so all of these three, actually, w one of the things that's interesting uh, for me that could possibly come out of this uh, is if they would create a new category. And then I don't, yeah, digital cultural heritage, and I don't care if we are first or second or third to win the award. I would feel that this campaign is a success if Project Gutenberg is recognized and archive.org is recognized and every year we're in tears because they didn't pick us yet, uh, but they're picking great stuff like that. It would be really cool. So that would be a sort of new category. Um, uh, still, when I hear that, I have um, some people also have a little bit of a fear that we might take ourselves a little bit too seriously. Uh, and don't you think that it may be possible that once we get into that big pool, that might be scary to people, and uh, on the contrary of having getting more participants, they might feel more than this thing is getting in a not accessible as it was before? I would love if UNESCO said no more than if they said yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a little bit about hacking UNESCO, isn't it? You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's shaking the barrel a bit. Like, okay, we're going to come to you, we're not going to change our policies, we're not going to lock down our site or make it fixed, and if your rules say we have to make it fixed, well, we don't want to be part of your list. No. And I would, I would, m I, I think it would be much, much more interesting if UNESCO said officially, no, you cannot be World Heritage because you're digital. That would be a really interesting public conversation. Okay, uh, I think we have time for one very quick question. I uh, I wanted to respond to Florence's uh, thought. I just had this sudden horrifying flash in my mind of it, it's, it's um, an articles for deletion discussion about some trivial pop star and someone writes, delete, we're a world cultural heritage site. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so maybe we, we have to be careful about that. You have a very good point there, Florence. I, I can probably make a good case for being the biggest admirer of Project Gutenberg in the room. I was so inspired by it that I created a Hebrew version in 1999 before Wikipedia, but which, which is, which is a, a preface to what I want to say. I think Project Gutenberg and archive.org deserve a, a lot more recognition than they get, but Wikipedia is still number one. Remember, creative masterpiece creative masterpiece. Archival is important, but it's not creative. Okay, thank you very much. I think that brings us to the end of, uh, of our session. Um, uh, I don't know, are we is able the, to show uh, the video? Is there anybody who wants to uh, have further question? Because I think it's a good chance to get on the page, look at the video. We don't have to make it here, and we can rather have two yeah. or three more questions if the people like that. Yeah. yeah, I know. I have one and a half minutes left. Ah, okay, so <laughs> one more quick question here. Oh, so well, somebody there's one in the back. Yeah. Can you, can you post on? Uh, could we get? Sorry, could you get a microphone? Get a microphone. We don't. We can press you the. I, I don't. I do not forget the name. And someone, uh, uh, someone mentioned to minor Wikipedia, small Wikipedia. Uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to. They, they call active because, especially, 100 Wikipedia, 100 article or encyclopedia is uh, could be useful. I don't know. I'm not sure, but. I, uh, but I like this idea, a Wikipedia for World Places, because World Heritage has three categories, you mean. Cultural, natural, and endangered. Uh, either natural, or the, uh, oh, so, sorry, it's German, or uh, cultural. There are some endangered uh, World Heritage 
they are world has bad and endangered, and uh, we need to much more uh, pay attention, pay care for those uh, endangered. Otherwise, they would be collapsed, they lost in the next generation, and it would, wouldn't be heritage at any rate. I'd like you people uh, to care about those minor, small Wikipedias. If we uh, only focus on major, useful, big Wikipedias, they might be lost out of our attention. Please take care of small Wikipedia as well, big, successful Wikipedia. And I'd like to have some uh, opinion from uh, one of the panel, if, uh, if possible. Well, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. They need to be protected, they need to grow, uh, and I think the best way to protect them is to grow them, uh, yeah. and to, to grow a community around them, and to, to enable people to work on them. Uh, and that's the world, do we need uh, world heritage status for that? No, we don't. Does it help? Yes, I think it does. So that's good enough reason for me to, um, to have this in, uh, as part of this uh, initiative. Okay, so I, uh, I gather that we are now finished uh, at the end of, the, of, of our um, uh, talk here. Thank you very much. Uh, you can uh, either talk to Katrin or to me or to whoever you want about this uh, further on. Um, just to give you one uh, short uh, anecdote from, uh, we had our, we are currently in, in the way of our budget meeting, uh, a budget proposal for the next year, and I had a little thought exper experiment with my staff and asked them, where do you see Wikimedia Germany and what's your goal in like, Ten years time or five years time, and they said, "Well, uh, in uh, in five years, I want to read a headline that says uh, UNESCO is on Wikipedia's World Heritage uh, list." So um, <laughs> that's how we think about it. Thank you very much for uh, for being here. <laughs> no, we are asked yet. How can we join that? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. that's yeah. Let's discuss that uh, in yeah. uh, it was answered. Was I, I, I it's, it's on the web page. The FAQ and. I think if it's if it's World Heritage 2012, then it's Nobel Prize 2014. Peace. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Sarah Strech. Are we? That's good. It's Sturch, but it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> uh, about Wikimedia. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See, I'm not the only one who's bad at other languages. So, so hi everybody. I'm uh, Sarah Sturch, and uh, you can't really see the bottom, but there's all my information. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, butchered butchered English, uh, American translation. So um, there's my Twitter, feel free to follow me, and um, my username is obviously the same as my real name. Um, so I'm pretty active in Glam Wiki, um, if some of you uh, might have seen me speak about public art a couple days ago, and um, a little bit about my work in Washington, D.C. Um, I have um, my background, my undergraduate work is in uh, Native American studies. So a large focus of my talk is gonna be about indigenous communities in North America and how they can possibly utilize Wikipedia as a cultural preservation tool. Um, so my original talk, I presented this a few weeks ago at the Indigenous Peoples and Museums Conference in, in the States, and it was pretty geared towards people who weren't familiar with Wikipedia. So hopefully this will go pretty well. We'll see. So this is our vision statement with the Wikimedia Foundation, as if you weren't familiar with it. Imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. That's our commitment. Uh, this image is of Sequoia. Sequoia was a uh, Eastern Cherokee, or Cherokee Indian, and um, uh, he created the first written language for an indigenous community in North America, public domain. So. It, 
the amazing thing about our vision statement is, as many of you know, with GLAMs and cultural institutions and communities, that it pretty much overlaps with what these organizations want to see take place of their own uh, collections and, and cultural materials. So I'm trying to explore ways, I'm actually, this is going to be my thesis paper, if all goes well, um, about how these uh, Native American communities and First Nations Canadian and um, Latin American communities can use Wikipedia as a preservation tool. And I think it makes sense in regards to our vision statement and preservation. So this is uh, Cherokee Wikipedia, uh, which, as I just mentioned, um, Sequoia pretty much wrote um, the language. So every single article is in uh, Cherokee. And while this is really wonderful, and I know some of you here are probably involved in small Wikipedias, um, small language, rare language, um, maybe about the Cherokee community of North America is the largest Indian community. Um, they probably have, let's say, 100,000 members of their tribal community. Um, maybe, I'm not sure the exact statistics on how many people are actually contributing to this Wikipedia, but out of those, let's say, 100,000 people, maybe only about 15% speak Cherokee. So that means there's probably 10 people probably writing um, the articles here. And most of them are pretty Cherokee-centric. Um, you will find Michael Jackson has an article, but um, a large portion of it relates to the Cherokee community. And while this is really great, and obviously it's, um, it's a way for this culture to preserve their language and, and tools and skills and uh, cultural heritage, it doesn't really benefit a, a broader audience, including those Cherokee people who do not speak English. Um, or pardon me, who do not speak Cherokee. So I'd like to see how we can um, bring the knowledge of these people who speak Cherokee and other languages and other communities to Wikipedia. So English Wikipedia has approximately 5,900 articles related to indigenous communities in North America. And the majority of those, probably about 75% are stubs or uh, utilize highly outdated material or are written and are generally written in manners that um, use outdated, and I hate to use the term, but non-politically correct language. In Native America, and I'm not sure um, if this is, this is maybe similar in indigenous communities that, uh, you know, from where you're from, uh, tribal names, community names, titles are changing all the time. Um, while some communities might call themselves the Navajo, you know, an Anglo name for this, this is the Diné language Wikipedia. Um, it's very colorful, isn't it? Um, there's not a lot of articles. The Diné language has been saved by some really great people. And the Diné are the Navajo, which um, are one of, another one of the largest communities of indigenous people um, out of Arizona and the New Mexico area. Um, again, their Wikipedia is pretty Diné-centric, which makes sense. Um, but English Wikipedia is severely lacking in cultural uh, content related to the Diné people. So in regards to language uh, and names and titles changing, many of our English language Wikipedias, and the same goes, a German uh, language has a very um, large amount, and generally higher quality articles about indigenous American um, communities. And the Germans have a really surreal relationship with Native America. Are there any Germans here right now? Um, uh, the Indian festivals, et cetera. Um, it's really fascinating that the Germans usually write better articles about Native Americans than um, people in America are. So how can we utilize these ever-changing languages, communities, and titles, and cultures to better our English Wikipedia, and your Wikipedias, too? So the cons. Here come the fancy, exciting PowerPoint things. So low-quality articles are what we have right now, as mentioned. A large portion of indigenous cultures revolve around oral history. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the citations um, uh, oral citations project, which I only recently found out about last week, and I am really hoping to be able to work with um, uh, those Wikipedians to see how we can explore oral history usage from indigenous Native American communities. Because one of my qualms about the Wikimedia Foundation, and this is no offense to our um, fellow Wikipedians in, in other countries um, who are struggling with the same thing, but Native American communities are incredibly um, forgotten about sometimes. Not all, but a lot of them. And um, it, I don't think anyone's really talking about this at Wikimedia. And if you know somebody who has interest in it, please let me know. But it's been really hard for me to try to get my voice heard about the urgency of, of helping our local communities in North America um, 
utilize this technology. And oral histories and the oral citation project is just a start, and I'd like to see it come to America. So while oral history is based around indigenous communities, um, preservation and stories, because most of the, story of, of the written uh, secondary sources are usually done by white people um, who um, aren't always accepted or uh, approved of by some of the uh, community members. And a lot of the content that we find on English Wikipedia is outdated. So um, when ethnography was being used over anthropology, and anthropology was still in its early stages. So we need better history and, and sources, and I think oral history can provide us with those opportunities if we use it correctly. So lack of awareness about verbiage and political correctness, which I touched on briefly earlier. Um, I find myself going through articles occasionally and finding people called red men, people called um, you know, just Indians flat out. Um, a lot of indigenous communities prefer to um, capitalize the word indigenous or the word native or of course their tribal community because it shows sovereignty, um, which is a very big part of Native America. And while I can't blame a lot of the, since most contributors are not native, I can't blame them maybe for being, it's because they're usually unaware, but we need to, to think about this and see how we can help change this and make Wikipedians who are non-native more aware of the, the need for appropriate verbiage. So few contemporary images of communities and people are something I see a lot in commons. We have lots and lots of really amazing public domain images um, or archival images from around the world that come to commons. Um, everyone's kind of familiar with the old Plains Indian, you know, with the big headdress and the tomahawk or smoking a pipe in your teepee. Well, most Indians never did that. Most Indians don't. And they still don't, but people think they do. So we are desperate for contemporary images of people from those communities. And aside from maybe going to a powwow, big Indian festival, we don't get a lot of images. So it'd be really great to be able to work with communities to get contemporary images and show people that Native America is here now and that they are contemporary people and they don't wear buckskins, they still don't ride horses, they don't ride horses, well, some of them do, but it's not how it, people assume it usually, uh, it's not, not the stereotype doesn't live. Anyone can edit or use um, the fear of abuse. So when I speak with um, a lot, number of indigenous people about this concern um, and about this opportunity, people fear abuse of their content. It's very similar to glams. They fear we're going to take their images and abuse them and plaster them everywhere and draw mustaches on the Mona Lisa, which we have, and you know, et cetera. But indigenous communities, and, and I hate to use blanket statements, but the majority of the people that I've spoken to with and, and had the honor of working with have said, we fear that our content is going to be abused. That white people are going to abuse it, that people over the world aren't going to understand our um, oral histories and that they're not going to appreciate it. So this maybe isn't a visual concern like with glams, but it's a cultural heritage concern that people are going to have their memories and ideas and religious beliefs, et cetera, mocked and abused and removed. So lack of con contributions from indigenous people, mainly white males, sorry, um, this is one of our favorite white Indians from Dances with Wolves, the great Kevin Costner, living the white man fantasy of being an Indian for a while. Um, so there he is in all his glory. As we all know, and as you can tell by being in the room, you know, the most people who edit Wikipedia are white guys. Um, and while we appreciate your contributions, um, we need to broaden that. And I often say we need people from around the world, every skin, every color, every gender, every belief, to be contributing more. And um, we severely lack contributions from indigenous people, and that's not just Native America. And as we've said with the gender gap stuff, and I know some people go, oh, here she goes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's desperate, we, we desperately need these voices. And while we need to be neutral, it doesn't mean we still can't have that voice in our articles and content. And right now, we're still getting the white man's voice. And that's just like saying the anthropologists are going to be writing these articles in a way. I hope this makes sense. I haven't had to speak about it to Wikipedians, and it's different than speaking about it to anthropologists. So, so this is um, Jim Denemy. He is an Ojibwe uh, artist, Ojibwe, so he's from uh, Minnesota. And he is a re really remarkable a surrealist uh, historical painter. So he takes um, indigenous, uh, Native American, uh, oh my God, I have five minutes. So he... I could talk about this all day, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, he, he's a remarkable artist. I wrote his, his, the Wikipedia article about him and he found out and he sent me a painting. Um, so when I 
talk to, um, and his, he's just remarkable. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm a total fangirl for Jim Denemy. So it's free. This is, the, this is my pitch when I talk to indigenous communities. I go, well, it's free, so it's affordable. And if you're well aware of indigenous communities' struggles, um, especially in North America and probably around the world, they're the most impoverished people in North America. Um, more suicide rates, more, I mean, it's horrible situation in many of these communities and Wikipedia is free so they don't have to invest in archives they have Wikipedia you don't have to edit it if you don't want to you don't have to contribute anything you don't want to when I promote this or discuss it with indigenous people a lot of them go well I don't want to give up all my stuff I think you're gonna come in and steal everything sort of like at glams well you don't have to give things if you don't want to you don't have to do this it's a skill builder one of my goals is is to see how we can use this in education um, with kids on the res, adults on the res, people who don't have jobs. How can we teach them about using sources, being good researchers and writers? Preservation, as I've said before, cultural preservation. This is an affordable and free way for people to share with communities around the world some of their special um, cultures and histories and preserve. Exposure, it kind of gives a, a really unique, with, with Jim, for example, I write primarily about indigenous artists when I'm not writing about glam stuff or um, public art. and all of the artists that I've written about have been like, wow, my web traffic's doubled because of Wikipedia, which is pretty cool. And uh, so for native artists, it's a great opportunity. So I'm wrapping up here. These are just some of the partnership and possibilities that I'd like to see um, evolve out of, of my theories and ideas. Um, I'd like to work with tribal glams, so galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, to expand on the content related to their collections and culture on Wikipedia. So how can we go in and work directly with people and foster a relationship, which will probably take quite some time to see how we can bring information about their remarkable collections and culture to our website and possibly to commons, et cetera. I'd like to provide a framework for Wikipedians like yourselves or whoever um, regarding cultural sensitivity. As far as I know, and I think I've whined about it on a lot of mailing lists, there isn't one. Um, there isn't one when it comes to dealing with people who aren't of your same gender, dealing with people who are uh, writing about sexuality, writing about indigenous communities. Again, there's verbiage, there's respectful ways to go about writing that are still neutral points of view, and this needs to be examined and documented and written about utilizing people from both sides, Wikipedia and indigenous worlds. Um, this fall, I'll be serving as Wikipedian in residence at the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian. So one of our goals this fall is to examine this opportunity start thinking about how we can make this happen. And we're going to be planning an indigenous peoples and free culture conference, which for the first time, as far as I'm aware, will bring together indigenous people from throughout the world and free culture enthusiasts to come together and see how we can possibly partner together and work together to make this a reality. I'm almost done. Oh, you're, oh, you, I'm like, you're applauding that idea. Yes, sorry. I'm so self-conscious. After I had to like follow, I mean like Jimmy and, even Liam, who's my friend, and all this conversation. I was so nervous about, I didn't think anyone was gonna stay, so I'm really grateful. Um, so, I'm almost done. So, outreach. Um, we have Wikipedians in uh, residencies at museums. I wanna see Wikipedians on reservations. Um, reservations are the tribal communities. We don't need to go into the history, but I'm sure you're aware. Um, I don't want this to have to be a person like me. I want this to be a native person from the community. I'd love to be able to see some type of opportunity where we can send a Wikipedian to a reservation, teach people how to edit, teach people how to use this as a tool, and then go on their merry way, like we, do with, we hope to do with GLAMS, and have Indians contributing to Wikipedia. So thank you so very much for letting me babble about my passion, and uh, thank you. Um, quickly, so you and I should probably have a talk um, okay. separately, but... Uh, question. We uh, don't talk at Wikipedia. Do we, trust me, I'm Wikimania, right? Enough. Do we have, I mean, can you offer a case study of a um, Native American or First Nation person or whatever no. trying to contribute and was there a problem or, you know, um, do we know why they don't contribute? We, do, we just don't know. You just, we just like to see it. Right. Yeah, this is, again, this is all my, my theory. I mean, I've been, okay. I'm pre this is like my third time. I'll be presenting this in another f few weeks at museums and computer networks. I mean, I'm trying to just drill this into everyone's head. That, okay, we don't know. But, but I get we it. don't know. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we'll Second find quick out. question. Um, do we need, or does anyone need, a Navajo Wikipedia? 
That is, does anyone need a Navajo Wikipedia to gain access to knowledge? Does anyone, does anyone need not it? have access to knowledge because the knowledge does not come in Navajo? That is what I'm asking. Um. <laughs> Are there any people who speak only that no, and only a Navajo not. Wikipedia would give will, them knowledge? Because if not... Whoa, okay. The, well, hold on no, a second. Cause because those people probably not, are very old and they're probably never going to use a computer and they're dying. So I'm if not, to be blunt. if not, it's outside our mission. Well, I don't. That's not my problem. I don't. I, I didn't approve Cherokee Wikipedia. I think someone's trying to get an Alabama language. I'm Wikipedia. not arguing against that Wikipedia. Yeah. I'm, I'm just commenting. Oh, then that someone needs to bring that up with them. <laughs> so, because I'm I'm talking about utilizing it on other language Wikipedias. Um, I think it's cool that there's a Cherokee Wikipedia because it's a pro cultural preservation tool. Sure. But um, but it's not within our mission. They can well, use it for cultural pres preservation. Why isn't it in the mission? Because we're we're bringing free knowledge to people. Well, so are they. No, they're not. They're using it to preserve no, their language. No, it's it's part of English Wikipedia. I mean, it's a part of the Wikipedia language. Sure, crew. sure. I, I have There's a lot of languages that people like. Very few people speak, and sure, but I, the Klingon Wikipedia doesn't. It, Cherokee bring free is not knowledge. Klingon. <laughs> God, it's so insulting. No, no. no offense to the Klingons. No, it's not. No, it it doesn't bring knowledge to people who don't otherwise have it. But but that's not true. There's there are other individuals who speak Cherokee who are t educators who are there are white people who are learning Cherokee. There are German people who can speak Cherokee better than Cherokee Indians. They exist. Sure, so but they don't, don't need a Cherokee Wikipedia. Well, you need to bring that up with Cherokee Wikipedia, and I don't think, I don't agree with you. But then we don't. There are plenty of other smaller languages Wikipedia's that we don't need. Then, just like we said earlier in the previous talk, small Wikipedia's. Well, I think that it's fine to have the Cherokee, it's fine to have the Diné. Sure. I'm just confused. I'm, I'm we don't need to, you know, save them or... or okay, let's... Uh, well, it's not my... Pr that's, um, I don't work for the foundation. I don't know how that whole thing works. No, I was talking about... Okay, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear, so... Uh, whoever... Uh, some other people, uh, we, have time. we don't have a uh, time for question. No, 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 I'm sorry. We don't have... Uh, our la last uh, lecture will be uh, from Fr Florence uh, de Vuer. And uh, she, will, uh, she will ask us to stand up, speak words, and uh, spread the uh, wiki passion. I have a question to you. How much time do you have? 25 minutes, but not more. But uh, it's not possible because there is a, there is a stop afterwards. It's the coffee should stop. 15 minutes uh, of... Anyway, my presentation is not yet Liam, come with me. <laughs> Liam, come with me. Come on stage. <laughs> yeah. Of course I should start. I know I will already late. So I'm going to ask a few, because I felt so. I feel less lonely. Uh, I have a question for you guys. How many of you have been already, hello Lodevike. How many of you have already given a speech about Wikipedia in the past year? Please raise your hand. How many have given more than five? And how many are planning to do one, at least in the coming year? 
Are you planning to give a talk about Wikipedia in the public, in the library, or in university, or to a business, or whatever? Ah, much better. Okay. Let's be <laughs> I'm relieved. Okay, um, so as far as I am uh, as I am concerned, I joined Wikipedia that was nearly 10 years ago. I was first an anonymous editor, of course, just as most of you, I guess. And after two years, I, wa I received an email from a woman living 300 kilometers from me. And she said, I just discovered Wikipedia. Nobody knows about that. I have a monthly seminar for librarians, uh, various people. And I would like somebody to give them a talk, a presentation about Wikipedia. That was my, my first one. That was back in 2004. I went there. I had half an hour. And I remember three things about this talk. The first thing I remember, my PowerPoint was pure crap. I will not show it because it's horrible. <laughs> it's very much a shame of that time. My second memory was that my talk was supposed to, ha to last 30 minutes. And I was only halfway after 30 minutes. So I had to stop. Um, and my third memory is that the entire time my hands were shaking like this, and my voice was like this. How many of you feel unwell when you talk? A few of them? Nah. <laughs> we'll check a couple of these things. So, um, one of the things that which has been very strange to me in the past seven years I've been giving some talks is that to see how few people actually co go to libraries, go to their city halls, the, gov the local governments, uh, maybe some business meetings, uh, any place where they could talk about Wikipedia. There are actually very few of them, to the point that when we work in a chapter, we re rec very recently received a, a whole bunch of requests, and none of them were fulfilled. Nobody was available and willing to go and, s and give a speech. So there are many reasons for this. One of those might say, ah, it costs money, except that they, when it's locally, that's not really an argument. Or they might say they don't have the time. I don't know how many hours you spend on the project every week, but I think it shouldn't really be an issue in reality, right? Um, there's a whole bunch of material already available, so as to be a reference work on Meta. I don't know if you know this page. It's very little outdated. If you have some presentation, please do put some there. And there's also a lot of stuff on SlideShare. So there's a lot of stuff to work upon. But one of the arguments why I think many people just don't give any speech is fear. So maybe not a phobia to the point that you are not able to jump on there, but at least a fear that is, that is getting you nervous. So that, that was a good quote. This is was yesterday. My own presentation about public art will be shortly. I'm terribly nervous. Uh uh yeah it was it was interesting that you wrote it right so uh huh so i answered and i said well only the nice people around here everybody knows each other so here's one of the places we shouldn't be nervous right but then that was philip Baudet, is the one speaking in the other room next to ours just saying i'm terribly nervous myself when i'm thinking of my presentation and <laughs> we uh, say well i won't be able to support you because i will be nervous in this one <laughs> And then we, we, we concluded we would be nervous together. <laughs> Absolutely. And I can tell you, in the past two days, I have been collecting quotes. Yeah, I've been collecting quotes of people saying, mm -hmm, I'm very nervous. I was able to recognize the French one, the Spanish one. So I did just put the, some of the English one. But there were many, many of them. And I'm pretty sure some people just don't say anything, but you don't feel so well either yourself, right? Are we okay? So yeah, one of the fear we have is, in terms of public speaking, we fear the dark, we feel being lonely, we feel aging, maybe have th having some, some crease there, uh, gray hair. We feel a lot of things, and among those things, there's the fact of being speaking in front of a public. And that's a bit ridiculous. There's actually very few reasons for this to happen. Um, realize that no one has ever died from a bad presentation. Um, no one ever committed suicide on stage, as far as I know. Very few people were killed while they were giving a talk. Uh, there is a notable exception, uh, Malcolm X, as uh, an American <laughs> activist in human. On stage? On stage, while, while he was speaking? 
Oh, but that's different, not on stage, right? But however, Malcolm X was killed uh, whilst he was speaking. You can see the ballot shot, but that was in 1965, so with chance it was earlier than any of you born. Actually, it's even older than me, so that's a reference. Um, and if ever he was not killed because he was a bad speaker, he was killed because he was a good speaker. So, big difference. Uh, yesterday, I remember uh, Christophe, who was speaking in the Rapaport, also mentioned at the beginning of his talk, I, I thought of bringing some tomatoes in, <laughs> in case some people would throw some at me. <laughs> so this happens, you may also get some shoes in the face, just push, <laughs> but that's not very frequent, right? So, well, that happens. So it is, there's something very strange, why you should we fear something? For example, if I get a, a heart stroke or anything, if I faint, uh, chances that every, every one of you would see that and come to help me, right? And you will notice often in, in, during conference, people sit on the side or near the door. It's either because they want to escape from fire or from boredom sometimes. <laughs> so the good news is that I am one of the ones that can s escape the quickest, right? So I'm rather safe, actually. But still, I don't know why the body still believes that it, there's something wrong here. And this is what I see, right? You can thank, well, it was actually yesterday, but thank you to Fezedo for the picture. So this is what my eyes are seeing. You see, one of the fear of the public speaker is all the empty, sp <laughs> the empty space, <laughs> or the light. If you got on stage, you will get the, the full light in front of your eyes. It's very painful. But this, here is what my brain sees. <laughs> <laughs> The, the human body has been used to something over the, the years. There are four, four, four points when it happens which are generating the fears. The first reason, the, you're alone on stage. When you're alone on stage, it's very scary, so that's why I ask you to be there, because <laughs> <laughs> I feel better when you're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you're alone normally, and you're alone in a you know a, a very empty territory. So they can it's easier to go, come and catch you. The third thing, yeah, I'm yeah. Lava. yes. The third point is you. I have no weapon, right, to defend myself. Actually, I have a microphone, but it's not really a weapon. That, but that's the third thing. And the fourth thing, I have in front of me a whole crowd of creatures watching me. That's really scary. And in the history of human life, uh, a situation of that type is basically meaning there is big chance that some predators is coming to get to you and eat you alive. So of course the body is getting used to this and is reacting to this. So usually the breath is uh, you <laughs> getting ready. The blood is accelerating in the heart and not going to the brain. So the brain you're getting dizzy and the legs you're getting to run away for your life. So. Which is the thing that which is strange? You're getting used to defend yourself in front of a fear which is which gets nowhere, and the real stress which is generated by uh, the speak or actually not dealt with. So one of the things you could do is to try to identify what are the things you can do something about. If you can't do anything about the problem, well, you don't just don't do anything. But if there are some things you can do, try to fix them. So I just listed a couple of the things I could identify over time. What? Uh, thank you very much for Guillaume for giving me that idea yesterday. Right? Think about this one, that's philosophy. So amongst the things you can do is prepare the talk. That seems a bit, a bit stupid, but if you are just as myself, I prepared the talk yesterday evening, that's bad. Normally it should be done two weeks, three weeks in advance, and you should repeat it at least 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. Just repeat over and over again. How to deliver it? I was absolutely amazed. In the past few days, we were all friends together, so that's okay. But honestly, some of the presentation w were uh, not very well prepared, right? So here are some recommendations of either books or uh, web links where you can find some advice, some recommendations, some tips of things that can help you. This said, as usual, this is NPOV stuff. 
even if the first two books are basically the most famous book in terms of how to do a right PowerPoint presentation, try to not respect what is inside. Let me explain why. This is the, the typical presentation uh, slide recommended by these two books is with no text or very little text, a nice image, something speaking, so that you will you remember. Do you remember this one? Two days ago, the big slides with a huge amount of text from Sue. This is against every recommendation in, in the books. However, if you look at the, the Twitter recommendation, which were this afternoon going through uh, the slides, where put some text because when you're in an audience which is international and don't understand and speak English very well, well, it's actually a good idea to write down the things on the slide. Yep. So the big focus, the number one focus, think of your audience. Don't think of yourself. Think of the people in front of you. Who are they? Why are they here? And what are they expecting? Right? So that's the number one thing to keep in your mind anytime. There's a, um, it's not very visible here, but you have a comment from, hmm, with, from Cool. Note to presenters, bring slides. Many people aren't native English speakers, so visual helps. So there, there's a, a work to do on this. The second thing you can try to do <laughs> is to try to wear appropriate and um, comfortable clothing. Two pieces of advice on this. Uh, the first is usually we are recommended to, to dress just slightly better than the people in the, the audience. Just to show respect, right? So slightly better, but not to get them too worried or anxious thinking there's a sort of penguins in front of them. So avoid this. And talking for the ladies, are there some ladies over there? Yeah, a couple. Did you ever talk, give a, a presentation about Wikipedia or any Wikimedia project? Yep, did you? Yes. When you do give a presentation, if you're a lady, do you wear a pants or dress? Hmm. Once I went to a presentation where the stage was about one meter above the audience, but everybody was on huh? and I had a short dress, right? And what was provided were no chairs, there was there were high stools, right? So I spent half an hour like this trying to think about not showing my underwear instead of talking. That was horrible. So try to be just be comfortable so you're not thinking of this all the time. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> maybe not to the right place. <laughs> well, that's a different type of... Uh <laughs> oh, well, but okay. Um, this might be extremely controversial, but I would say... Uh, it's okay to provide a presentation in ODT, that's great, we know open source, all that stuff, but half of the time when you go somewhere and give a presentation, you're not allowed to use your own laptop. They put it on their computer, and their computer do not have Neo Office, Open Office, or all these things. And you end up two minutes before the presentation with the document you cannot open, right? So give up, use P PowerPoint or whatever, PDF, anything, but Try to just think accessibility before thinking uh, philosophy or whatever. Even if it's a little bit sad, <laughs> it was after the presentation. So once I was in Germany and I had to give my speech without anything because I just couldn't open my stuff in time. So avoid to do that. Plan for the worst. It was uh, this morning, I think. Uh, did I break the light bulb of my beamer on the arbor wall right before it, etc.? Well, try to think in advance and come in advance to the meeting. And there are three reasons for this. When you're planned for a g to give a talk, whatever the number of people, whatever the size of the room, of the type of the people, come in advance for three reasons. Number one is to have the ability to put your stuff on the laptop, just as I did not do, right? That was not my fault. Second reason, you need to take the time to do go to the restroom beforehand. Not only because you need to go to the restroom, but also because you want to check in advance whether you have spinach on the teeth or, I'm serious, stain or zipper. Um, because once you're on stage, right, you have to spend the entire time here and you are thinking of it all the time. So hidden, you're more protected. That's a good size. But 
It's not very careful, right? <laughs> it's not very pleasant. That's the second reason. And the third reason, and that might be difficult for me, but come in advance to the previous talk and sit in the room with the other people. First, because then you realize how is the light, how you can see the slides, where you should be on the stage. Just check how it is for the people. And the second reason is, if you know no one, take the opportunity to say hi to people. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so then afterwards, when you speak, when you're less worried because you can look at someone and you know it's a friendly phrase, a face, right? Is that correct? So <laughs> try to be in advance. <laughs> We don't always do this, but then the final trap, oh, there's a, a cut at the end. The questions, that's the final stress at the end of a, uh, uh, of a presentation, in particular when you present Wikipedia and then you get some questions such as, yeah, that, this is not one of the worst ones. There are some about the porn star and then it gets political and whatever. And <laughs> or some question you have no idea about the answer or there are sometimes some journalists they want to ask you a stupid question and you don't know what to say. Or you know there is a blogger uh, trying to <laughs> make some weird explanation about wha what you're saying. So be super careful and just a bunch of comments and I made the mistake for all of them. Um, when you don't have an, uh, the answer to the question, don't say no. Just give your business card and say I'm going to answer afterwards and check the answer for you. Uh, so always answer when you do that, of course, afterwards. Uh, you may also pick when you have a difficult room with painful people, pick up five questions and an answer, answer only three of them. And you don't have the time for the other ones. <laughs> that works well. <laughs> uh, you always have to give the microphone in the room, but you, you're helpless on this one. Um, the other thing is always try to uh, repeat the question, but often they will say something very aggressive and negative and always repeat the question with a positive. So it, if they say, is it true that you deleted all the article, blah, 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 you will say, on the contrary, we keep all the article about this, right? So when they quote you, this is less painful, usually. Uh, and the last thing is, do not try to get on to into assumption. Uh, it may be this that this will happen. One of my worst situation was when I say, in case we will not have money, we will have trouble, which is something we know since, well, for the past 10 years. And the blogger transformed that into, we have nothing anymore, Wikipedia is going to stop. It's horrible. So <laughs> do not try to make if, whatever. So these are some of the, a few recommendations that I have collected over time. Uh, my one thinking is I would really like that so many more people go out to the public and go to talk, not to people they don't know at all because it's scary, but if you're a business an entrepreneur, you can go and talk in a business conference. If you're a, a, a teacher or student, you can give a talk in your university or your library. If you're a person related to political life or interested, you can contact your city hall members and just talk to them and explain to them what's going on in the project. The main benefit of this all is that for these people, Wikipedia is kind of faceless. They don't know what is behind this. They don't know who the people are. And once they have a face in front of them, they are likely to be much more positive about the project and much more supportive in case there are some mistakes. So it's important to show them some, some faces and not just talk to the press, talk to the blog. This is nice, but this is not sufficient in my view. So I hope that next year, all of you will have tried. Thank you very much.